On November 1st, 2017, the Houston Astros won the World Series at Dodger Stadium. Five years later, almost to the exact date, the Houston Astros won the World Series again, their second in franchise history. But my god, has a whole lot taken place sandwiched between the two championships, so let's go back to the beginning. In 2017, the Astros were a really good team, going on to of course win it all, and they did not skip a beat in 2018. In 2018, the Astros won more games than they did the previous year, going all the way back to the ALCS where they'd fallen 5 to the eventual World Series winning Boston Red Sox. So what did they do? Go out and win even more games the following year in 2019, winning 107 which was the most in franchise history heading back to the World Series. During the 2019 Fall Classic, the road team won every single game, with the Nationals winning all four games at Minute Maid Park including Game 7 taking down the Astros in as many games. And that's when the bomb dropped. In early 2020, it was a officially revealed that the Houston Astros were stealing signs during the 2017 season along with part of 2018. Many suspected the team of using an electronic buzzer at the plate to help them hit in 2019, especially directed toward Jose Altuve after his walk-off pennant clinching homer, but the report didn't find or confirm that happened. Nonetheless, the Astros cheated their way to a championship in 2017 and were now public enemy number one. Manager AJ Hinch and general manager Jeff Lunau were suspended by the league, subsequently getting fired by the Astros, with the team hiring Dusty Baker to right the ship and then a bullet was dodged. Due to the pandemic, the 2020 season was delayed, opening back up for a shortened schedule with no fans allowed in the park. Fans were allowed back in during the NLCS and World Series taking place in Texas, but the Astros played in neither of those series, meaning they didn't play in front of a single fan in 2020. Nobody to boo them, nobody to heckle them, nothing. Nothing to distract or potentially bother any Astros player but I guess that's what 2021 was for. But first, a big key player and part of the team's core for several years would be leaving. George Springer ended up signing with the Blue Jays, Garrett Cole had signed with the Yankees after 2019, and Justin Verlander was going to be out for all of 2021 due to Tommy John surgery. Those are three huge players no longer on the team, opposing fans were about to give them all they got, it was a recipe for disaster, but the Strohs didn't blink, with outfielder Kyle Tucker taking over for Springer's production as they'd pump out a solid starting rotation and a 95 win team in the process, going all the way back to the World Series. Unfortunately for them, it was Atlanta's year, as the Braves ended up beating Houston in 6, with the second World Series in the last three seasons ending with the opposing team celebrating on the Minute Maid Park field. That was all followed by yet another key cornerstone piece of the franchise leaving, as star shortstop Carlos Correa would sign a deal with the Minnesota Twins. That is a big blow, someone who was a part of so many great Astros teams, now gone. Just like Springer, just like Cole, Alex Bregman was also coming off of a poor 2021 season, so now what? Well, the Astros just continued to do what they do best win. In 2022, the Astros won 106 games, the AL West division title for the fifth time in the last six years, and just couldn't have been any more elite. Jose Altuve was great, yet again, hitting 300 with a 921 OPS. Alex Bregman started off slow but got hot and went back to his true form for the better part of the season. Kyle Tucker was good, Jordan Alvarez was out of this world, and as far as the pitching went, it was just as elite if not more so. Justin Verlander was of course going to have questions surrounding him heading into 2022, considering he hadn't thrown a big league pitch in a year and a half, but he was incredible, pitching to a 1.75 ERA while striking out 185 hitters, all doing so at the age of 39. Jose Urquidy was reliable and solid, so was Luis Garcia, with Christian Javier having an underrated regular season. Then comes Framber Valdez. Framber Valdez is pretty much everything you can ask for in a starting pitcher. He gives you quality start after quality start, at one point throwing 25 consecutive quality starts, breaking Jacob deGrom's previous record of 24 back in 2018, and making a new MLB record. So as good as the Astros were, as dominant as they were, there was still a job left to be done but it goes much deeper than having to win the World Series. As we all now know, the 2017 Astros cheated while also winning the World Series, so beside really just Astros fans, mostly everyone hasn't really looked at that championship as legit ever since, understandably so. They knew what pitch was coming by using an illegal system, and it gave them an unfair advantage. That's the bottom line. Did they need to cheat? Absolutely not. They were already incredible. 
but they did, and nobody has really fully given them props for 2017. So in a lot of people's eyes, the Astros had still yet to win a real championship considering the one that they've ever won in their franchise is tainted. The Astros have of course been great ever since, winning a ton of games in 2018, winning even more in 2019, going to the ALCS in both years and heading back in 2020, yet again in 2021 along with the World Series. But there was a pattern that they'd lose every time. To this day, you can make the argument that the 2018 Houston Astros were a better team than the 2018 Boston Red Sox, but they lost in five, so it doesn't matter. In 2019, the Astros won 14 more games than the Nationals, the team that would end their chance at a title. In 2020, the Rays took them down, and in 2021, a team with less wins than the Astros took them down yet again in the World Series, this time being via the Braves. So heading into October of 2022, the Astros weren't just chilling. They had a job to get done, a chance to silence the haters. It wasn't going to be easy, but they had to win in order to finally get a 100% legit ring. And they knew it, but things did not start out ideally. Justin Verlander was not good in game one against the Mariners, to say the very least, giving up six runs on 10 hits, one which left the yard. The Astros offense came through, making it a close game by the end, but by the ninth, the Astros were just a strike away from being down one to nothing in the series. On a one-two pitch, Jeremy Pena would line a base hit into center field to keep the inning alive, having Seattle to choose to take their closer out of the ball game and put in a lefty Robbie Ray to face lefty monster Jordan Alvarez. Alvarez would send the second pitch he saw into the Houston night, walking it off and sending Astros fans into a frenzy. Game 2 featured yet another Mariners lead that would be lost because of a Jordan Alvarez home run, with Alex Bregman singling home an insurance run as the Strohs went on to win the game and take a 2-0 series lead into Seattle. The Mariners were finally playing a postseason game at home for the first time in 21 years, and the crowd was ready ready to erupt. Unfortunately for them, that never happened, as the Mariners would be held scoreless by the Astros pitching staff for not one, not two, not three, not four, but 18 innings. 18 innings went by without a run being scored for Seattle, as Jeremy Pena would be the hero for Houston hitting a home run in the top of the 18th for the only run of the game as the Astros won a marathon, sweeping the Mariners. And who would they face next? The New York Yankees. The Astros were already 3-for-3 three three in postseason matchups against New York, beating the Yankees in the 2015 wildcard game, beating the Yankees in the 2017 ALCS, winning the pennant, and beating the Yankees in the 2019 ALCS, winning the pennant. So would they go 4-for-4? Four four? The answer is a resounding yes. The Astros didn't even play around this time dusting off the Yankees and not even letting them win a single game, sweeping them and clinching at another pennant at Yankee Stadium. The NLCS featured two teams who had just upset a heavyweight, as the 89-win Padres took down the 111-win Dodgers and the 87-win Phillies took down the 101-win defending champion Braves. So whoever Houston faced was going to be an underdog, record-wise. The Phillies won in five, so the Astros were going to be facing yet another NL East team in the Fall Classic, with a 19 regular season win difference. I didn't really feel like there was a true underdog in this series, despite the Phillies having so many less wins than the Astros did. I say that because the Phillies were so red hot heading into the series that that part didn't really matter anymore, and most of America was rooting against Houston, so despite having 106 wins, you could argue that the Astros were the underdog? I don't know, but the point is that it was going to be a good series, as you would be foolish to pick one of them to win it quickly. The Astros jumped out to an early 5-0 lead in Game 1. Justin Verlander was on the mound. The game is over, right? Well, no, because Verlander is a bad World Series pitcher. Gave up 5 runs as the Phillies went on to win an extra inning 6-5. Here we go again. The Braves did the same thing last year, winning Game 1 in Houston, same with the Nationals in 2019. But fortunately for the Strohs, Game 1 doesn't decide the series, and nothing is set in stone. In Game 2, the Astros came out swinging and were eventually on top 5 to nothing again, this time holding it down as Framber Valdez pitched a gem followed by the bullpen closing it out, tying the series up. On to Philly we go, and it was going to be a little different than Houston, to say the least. It's going to be outside, colder, and the fans were going to be rowdy, hectic, crazy, and let the Astros hear it. 
and they did just that. In Game 3, the Phillies hit five home runs off of Lance McCullers, who many think was tipping his pitches, and something that Bryce Harper and the Phillies caught, able to get an advantage and go crazy. The pitching also got the job done, shutting Houston out and winning 7-0, getting a 2-1 series lead. As bad as things looked for Houston, all you have to do is just take a look one year back in the 2021 ALCS. The Red Sox, after taking a 1-1 series back home to Fenway, went off in Game 3 hitting four home runs off of the Astros pitching and beating them 12-3, taking a 2-1 series lead. So what did the Astros do? Hold the Red Sox to three runs the rest of the series, winning games four and five on the road, and coming back home to win the pennant. So with the Astros in the same spot, down 2-1 now in the 2022 World Series, what would they do? Hold the Phillies to three runs the rest of the series, winning games four and five on the road, and coming back home to win the World Series. Game four was the no-hitter game. This Christian Javier combined with Jose Abreu, Rafael Montero, and Ryan Presley to no-hit the Phillies tying the series up. Game 5 was Justin Verlander's redemption game. Following a leadoff home run by Kyle Schwarber, Verlander grinded it out for 5 innings, giving up no more runs as the Astros went on to just hold on to a 3-2 win. In Game 6, Kyle Schwarber went deep again, but beside that, Framber Valdez was nasty, throwing six innings while striking out nine before Jordan Alvarez did his thing, hitting a three-run bomb to straightaway center field, turning a one-run deficit for the Astros into a two-run lead, sending Astros fans into pandemonium. Christian Vazquez delivered an insurance run, and the bullpen took care of things from there, with Hector Neris throwing a shutout seventh, followed by a scoreless eighth by Jose Abreu, and a scoreless ninth by Ryan Presley getting the save as Kyle Tucker caught the final out, winning the World Series in Houston. The Astros are a tremendous organization. Say whatever you want about the shadiness and the cheating that happened years ago, you have every right and reason to. But there's something that cannot be denied, which is that the Houston Astros front office is one of if not the best in baseball at acquiring and developing talent. In 2017 and 2018, the Astros outfield consisted of George Springer, Josh Reddick, Marwin Gonzalez, and Jake Marisnik. That's a solid outfield. Well, Marwin has since fell off, same with Jake Marisnik, Reddick has retired, and Springer signed with the Blue Jays after 2020. No big deal. The Astros just cranked out Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker, and Chaz McCormick as the replacements, two of which are all-star players, with Jordan being an MVP caliber player every year. Garrett Cole was arguably the best pitcher in baseball in 2019, only to leave and join the Yankees. No big deal. The Astros just proceeded to pump out Framber Valdez, Christian Javier, Luis Garcia, and Jose Urquidy alongside a healthy Justin Verlander to assemble one of if not the best starting rotations in baseball. Carlos Correa was arguably the best shortstop in baseball in 2021, and now he's gone. No big deal. The Astros would just bring on 24-year-old Jeremy Pena to play shortstop. And what would he do? Have a solid regular season and go on to win not just ALCS MVP, but World Series MVP. That is the Houston Astros in a nutshell. They have great players and more great players ready to come up when needed. They are a cesspool of talent, not because of big free agent signings, but because of trading, drafting, and developing. Shout out to the entire Astros front office and everyone who's played a part in building this team. Shout out Dusty Baker for finally winning a ring he's deserved for so long. And shout out to, of course, the players themselves. Again, say whatever you want about the cheating, because it's true. The Astros cheated, it was wrong, and that was that. But that's now in the past. It's been in the past. And what's pretty clear now is that the Houston Astros are a dynasty baseball's biggest dynasty.